Hi guys, this is Mia from Mimo Design Laser Files or Laser with Mimo Design. Today I'll teach you how you can connect and cut text. You can use it for shelf sitters. You can cut small names for a plate. You could even use it for signage. Or you could just use it to layer on top of some finished products. I'll teach you how to use regular fonts as well as cursive fonts. Sounds like fun? Stick around and watch this video. We are now in Lightburn. Connecting text is actually really easy. You want to click on create text and then you type in whatever name you want. I'll just type in Mimo design. And as you see, I already have a cursive font. This is one of my favorite cursive fonts to use, but you can use any. So once you have your design, you can either choose to uh, set the measurements in the size you want it to cut, or you could import whatever you want to place it on. I will hit enter for this one and I'll actually make it um, connected to each other so I can place it directly on top of this little ornament. So I'll scale it down to a size that I find appropriate. And to move these closer, I can go up here in vSpace and I can keep going until I find the right place. So I'll again move it over to my ornament here just to see where it will go. And the ornament is this one, just if you wanted to see the finished product. Now that I have my text, I don't want to cut it as is because these little lines are way too thin and they will with guarantee break. Also, I haven't connected the E to the D. Um, the Mimo is okay, but I still have a couple of dots here that will come loose. So what I want to do is to right click and then I will hit convert to path. Now my text turned into an SVG. I will not be able to edit my text now, but I can treat it as an SVG. So I will mark the sign here and I'll just use my arrow keys, hold down control, then you don't have too much movement and I'll move it closer to my D. The same thing I will do with my two dots here, I will hold down control, mark both of them, and I can move them down with my uh, arrow keys. I will stretch it just to make them a little bigger. And I actually think I'll have to do that one at a time. So instead of doing both, I will just stretch them, hold down my control, and use my mouse to place them where I want them to be. I will copy this and I will paste it. You could also duplicate. And I'll just move this over here and see if I can position it somewhere. I'll delete the original little dot here. So I need to move this up just a little closer. And I think I have it around, yeah. So now I have my design, which is all connected. I will now mark everything and I'll go over and build all selected shapes together. The design is still too thin, so I will use offset shapes. And whenever I am doing text, 
I like to do, I'm in millimeter by the way, so it will not be the same measures if you are in inches. But I like to do around 0.2, I've said, to 0.5. So you can play around with it, and I do recommend that you always cut your design after you're done, so you are sure that it will not break. But for this one, I think I might go around 0.3. Looks good. And then I will choose the lead original. And I now have my text to cut. So let's see if I make this red. I'll just move it over here. And you can see how this one would look like. So easy peasy. If you are making a name for a plate, as example, this is how I would do it. So let's use the name Sophie. I want to show you a different font because if you use the cursive, it's the same method as I showed you before. So let's choose a regular font. I'll just move it over here so you can see it. Um, if you do something like this, it is a little hard to um, weld together because you will need to find a font that has these types of lines in the bottom. One font that I really like to use is Mogila Display. Let's see if I can find it. I'll just type in. It's a little slow when I am recording, but Mogila Display. This font I really like because it is already pretty thick, so you don't have to do a lot of offsets on it. But you do see that I have a lot of space between the letters, so the way I will fix that is to go to H space. If I lower these down, you can see how it will move my letters closer. You can do this until everything is close together, but as you see, it doesn't look great. So I will move them until I am satisfied. I'll just change this to black. The way you can turn off this view style, if you go to Windows, you can pick Wireframe Smooth instead then everything will look like this. Uh, also, if you set your item to fill over here, if you choose the build smooth, it will color it on the inside if your setting is set to fill. I just want mine to be unfilled, so I'll just change it to line while I am in the build view style. Anyway, th this was a little side jump. So I am kind of worried because this dot to the eye doesn't look like I want it to look. So I will actually go in with the F, between the F and the I, and I'll make a space. Then my eye dot is released, and I'll show you in a bit how to fix it. The S is connecting with my O, the I is connecting with the E, so this is okay. So again, I will right click and I'll choose Convert to Path, and now I have kind of an SVG. So I will mark the S and the O. This time I'll just drag my mouse carefully to the side. And I will do the same with my I and my E. I cannot connect the I with the F, but I can move it closer so it looks better. The thing I can connect is the dot here. 
So I'll move my dot down and around here would probably be okay. So again, I will hit world and I will make an asset. For this one, I don't need as much as an asset because this font is pretty thick already. So I will probably choose point one or point two. For this bigger font, I know that point one is actually okay, but I do recommend that you do at least point two. So now I have a little Sophie. But what if this girl was named Anne Sophie? Let's show you. Let's hit an Anne here. And since I already adjusted the age space, it will make the same. Yeah, and this is perfect. So I really don't have to do a lot with this. I will just right click. Oh, I need the. That doesn't look pretty. Let's see. But I'll just right click like this and I'll convert to path. Now I'll make the same offset as I did before, which was 0.1. And I can move it down here. So I know that this girl is actually with a, I don't know what you call it in English, but this little. Um, line in between. So, as you did see, my line is is not pretty in this Mogila. So, I'm actually going to create my own. I'll make the line, but I will uh, use my cursors to kind of move it. So, now I could go in and Place it where I want, move Anne a little closer. And I could copy paste, weld these together. So now I have it with this little um yeah square thing in the middle. It doesn't look as pretty, so I actually would probably go in and add something like a heart. I already have a little heart here. I cheated a little. If you want to know how to design hearts, I do have a great tutorial on that as well, which you can find up here. The tutorial is to design the hearts directly in Lightburn because you don't have that possibility. But what I wanted to do is to delete this little dot and then I would Connect the Anne and the Sophie over here. Make, make my heart just a tiny bit smaller. And I could even flip it just a little. But just make sure that it is connected with the S and the N. In this case, it could be other names as well. And once you have it, in the size and the position you want, you again just mark everything and hit weld. So this and Sophie is a little prettier um, with the hearts than this one. This is just my opinion. You can do whatever you want. Since I did go really small on this one, I can just go ahead and change the width and the height, let's say I wanted this to be 10 centimeters, I would just type in 100 millimeters and I would be able to cut this as is. So the smaller you choose to type in your name, the bigger you can actually make it um, without worrying that it will be too fragile. If you are making small text, again, I could show you this love sign. And where's my little text? There's a little Zoe. 
So you might see the difference. This one is tiny, tiny, um, because I used it to add to some ornaments. So I needed it to be tiny. So if you are making tiny letters, make sure that you use the offset uh, option right away. If you are making larger projects, you can basically make uh, any type of fonts and then just make it bigger without learning, if that makes sense. So that's about it. If you have any questions still, please let me know and please drop a comment. I would love to teach you how to do this and I really hope that you will succeed in everything I try to teach you. If you like this video, please give it a like, please subscribe to my channel and by adding a little comment, you could always just type in a heart. You will boost my algorithms and keep me motivated to do more tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.